Hey, what's up guys, it's MKBHD, and this is the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. Now, Samsung has learned a lot from the success of the Galaxy S3. People love that phone. So they started to take some design ideas from it and bring it to other products. So they shrunk one down and made a Galaxy S3 mini, and they stretched one out, and here we have the Galaxy Note 2. But this Note 2 is a little bit better than just a supercharged Galaxy S3, so we'll take a look and see all the reasons why that is now. But first of all, the size. Let's make a scale. This is the Galaxy Nexus, a phone that people originally thought was really big, just borderline too big, 4.65 inch display. Then another giant came along in a similar footprint, that 4.8 inch Galaxy S3. Both of these phones were, and still are, considered huge phones. And then there's the Galaxy Note, a 5.5 inch behemoth of a display, easily the largest of the smartphones out there right now. And you can see that the body of the Galaxy S3 can almost fit in the screen of the Note itself. It's that spacious. A lot of people seem to think it's too close to a tablet size, but trust me, it comes nowhere near the smallest of the Android tablets out there. And what's neat is all these displays are the same 1280 by 720 resolution. And because of the same resolution, you don't actually see more content when you're, for example, looking at a web page, but you do see the same content bigger on the Note, which helps with reading. So some content you just can't read. It's too small when you're zoomed all the way out on the Galaxy S3. But you look at it on the Note and you can actually pretty much read it, no problem. Oh, and the Note display also is not pentile, so that's also a plus. But you can't really talk much about this hardware without comparing it to that Galaxy S3, so I'll link my full Galaxy S3 review down below the like button on this video so you can get a better look at that. But in terms of comparison, these guys are rocking very similar exteriors. So the Note 2 has the camera and the flash, both in the same spot up at the top of the phone, but it moves the speaker down to the bottom. And they have a very similar slick back design. We, of course, both have the white versions here, and uh, they, look, they look very, very similar. You can see that the design elements from the Galaxy S3 have moved uh, up to the Galaxy Note size. They are also rocking the exact same imaging hardware, so the photo and video quality, 1080p video, is exactly the same. Both look very, very good. Obviously, the biggest difference between the Galaxy S3 and the Note 2 is that screen size. And you can call me a freak or whatever, but I can touch all four corners of the Galaxy S3's 4.8 inch display no problem at all making it a one-handed device. You can type everything, you can use the whole thing one-handed. The Note 2, on the other hand, is a guaranteed two-handed device for everyone except maybe, I don't know, Yao Ming. You can't touch all four corners with one hand, but it makes for very easy two-handed operation, especially when typing on that Samsung keyboard. There are some settings just on the Note 2 from Samsung to make it easier for one-handed use to turn on and basically use the phone with one hand, which basically just shrinks things down and moves them a little bit to one side of the screen. So with the calculator here, for example, you can use it with your left hand on the left hand side if you're a lefty, or on the right hand side with your right hand if you're a righty, and that's nifty. Now the one thing about the hardware is, and I don't know if it's just me or if it's just my Note, but the Note 2 rocks when you press the right hand side of it, it rocks back and forth. That's where the stylus sits, so I don't know if, you know, maybe the stylus is lighter than the rest of the body or if it's actually lopsided, but it's really annoying when I'm trying to type on a flat surface and it keeps bouncing over to the right. Very annoying, but I felt the need to mention that. But anyway, not only am I a fan of the Note 2's quad-core processor and 2 gigs of RAM and LTE, but the software is pretty great too. It runs Android 4.1.1 Jelly Bean, which is the latest version out right now. And on top of that is a little bit of TouchWiz. Now you guys know that I prefer stock Android of the Nexus line any day of the week. But with the screen size like this, you kind of do need some adjustments to be made. And you know, you get some different looks, some pre-installed apps and you know, the messy, ugly calendar app and the dreaded S voice is still present. But you also get things like Google Now and Android 4.1 Jelly Beans expandable notifications, which I love so much and you get a little nifty slide to open apps from the lock screen shortcuts, and you can pick which apps go there. So even this wicked multitasking mode that lets you use two apps at once with half the screen for each app, all this stuff you get uh, is, is a lot better than the previous versions. And this is way more responsive, by the way, than the first time they tried this. They tried this on a 10.1 inch tablet. It was awful. So I guess that shows off the Note 2's power. It's not even like I'd use this feature a lot, but when I do, 
Holy hell, it is useful. I mean, you could watch a video and fact check at the same time, or you could use Facebook and Google Plus at the same time, whatever you wanna do, it is fast. And yes, that is because this Note 2 is a powerhouse. I never really put a lot of weight on benchmarks, you guys know that, and I might do a video about why in the near future, but I ran a quick quadrant standard benchmark to see how it compares to other Android devices to see if that quad core and two gigs of RAM held up, and of course that combo did turn out on top, but in the end, it's really more about the experience that these high performance internals can deliver, and boy, do they deliver. Real world performance here is a 10 out of 10. This is half the hardware, and half jelly bean and Project Butter at work here, but everything, everything is buttery smooth, and I love it. Gaming on this huge display is really fun, whatever game you're playing, whether you're slicing and dicing fruit in landscape mode like a boss, or outrunning some zombies in portrait mode, everything happens so smooth on this massive display that it's really refreshing and pleasing to see for someone who's been using Android since Eclair, like me. And even if you're not gaming, regular performance in apps that you use every day is stellar. It's almost like you don't even notice that there could ever be any hangups. They're, they just don't happen. And I never, ever, ever, ever thought I would say this. Ever. But <laughs> I, I kind of like the stylus. And, and don't worry, you don't have to like it too. You don't, you don't even have to use the stylus. It's just in addition to the phone. But to me, it feels like a part of the experience of using this phone, especially a phone this size. You whip out the stylus and it's like, oh, you wanna use a stylus? You know, here's a few things that you might like to do. Using it for everyday use, you might have previously used your fingers. Kind, It feels kind of weird to use it in place of your fingers. I'll put it that way. I mean, it responds really well, just like your fingers do. It's not 2001 where the stylus is like, you know, a necessity to your phone and response times were more like, Project Chunky Peanut Butter than Project Butter, but it's an accessory, you know? It, it's called the Galaxy Note, and it is a major marketing feature for Samsung that you can use this stylus, but I just kinda use it once in a while, you know, and I have fun when I do. And also, PS, the handwriting recognition, that it's straight up one of the most impressive things I've ever seen on a phone next to Google Now. It is scarily accurate, no matter how messy your righty or lefty handwriting may be. It's really, really good. So that handwriting recognition is a plus in the stylus by itself. There's also even this hover feature, which is pretty neat. So you can hover over things without actually clicking them. That can reveal what certain buttons do, or you can have it slide through previews of a video clip to get to a clip you wanna watch, or even content awareness. So it knows when it's hovering over a text box and when it's not. So all this stuff bundles together in a stylus that fits neatly in the side of the note, out of the way if you don't want it and it's called the S Pen. And right next to that S Pen in the body is the second largest battery in any phone coming in at 3,100 milliamp hours. And I, I actually tried to kill it. I tried for a full day unsuccessfully, constant use, six and a half hours of screen on time, 22 hours of being on. I tried so hard, but it still wasn't dead. 10% left at 11.25 PM, so I called it quits. Very, very impressive, long, long battery life on this guy. So couple that battery life with super phone specs, a massive non-pentile 5.5 inch 720p super AMOLED display, buttery smooth performance with Android 4.1 and a bulging or pocket like no other, you can be proud to rock the Galaxy Note 2, which is arguably the best phone you can get right now. So there you go guys, that's been my experience with the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. Overall, this is absolutely a flagship of a phone. There's no question about that. It has a quad-core processor, Android 4.1 Jelly Bean, LTE in the United States, a huge 3,300 milliamp hour battery that could last two days with no problems. Uh, the only thing about it is the really large size, and that would make someone either consider it or throw it down the drain. But I think that you, you can try it out and you can actually get a better sense of uh, how big it feels in person, and you'll get used to it. Uh, I didn't think I was gonna get used to it at all. I thought it would always seem big to me, but now this seems phone size to me, which is a little weird to say, but it makes the Galaxy S3 seem small, which makes the Galaxy Nexus seem really small, which makes other smaller phones seem mini, as Samsung would definitely agree. So the choice is yours. Go ahead and leave a thumbs up on this video if you wanna see a more in-depth comparison to its brother over here, the Galaxy S3. I know a lot of people we're interested in both the similarities and the differences, so I covered a little bit of that. But if you wanna see a full video, uh, let me know. There's a comment section if you wanna talk about this. 
And uh, either way, that's been it. Thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you guys in the very next video, which should be one that you'll be uh, really excited to see. So don't miss the next one. Peace.